Well, good morning or good afternoon, everybody, depending on what part of the country you are located in. Uh, this is Joe Lucas. I am the founder, creator, uh, chief architect of uh, PracticePower.net, uh, soon to be known as Practice Power Academy. And I want to welcome you to our June 1st members webcast. So for some of you that are new here, I want to go over exactly uh, what we do, how things are happening, uh, how to get the, the best utilization of our time. So, so these weekly webcasts, coaching webcasts, are really designed to, to give members an opportunity to uh, get more value out of their membership, uh, ask me questions, interact. Uh, I will always bring uh, to these uh, webcasts, if you will, kind of what's going on, you know, what I'm seeing out there in, in, the, in the marketplace, uh, what I'm seeing out there as far as some like coaching work with some clients, and, and to really give you, you know, what I call here and now stuff. Um, you know, things that are, are just uh, relevant uh, to your business today, not last week, not last month, uh, not a while ago. So with that being said, uh, if you, uh, obviously if you're here, you went through uh, the invitation process and the registration process, you always have an opportunity to submit questions either uh, prior, uh, during registration or during uh, this uh, webcast. Uh, we're scheduled to go up to an hour. Uh, you know, 30, 45 minutes seems to be what we're, we're doing. And uh, with that, uh, I'll get rolling. So a couple things first and foremost, some practice power updates uh, real quick. Uh, later on today, we're going into maintenance mode. We're ready to actually port the new, the new website onto the server. Uh, so that means probably starting late afternoon, Eastern till early or late this evening, depending how long it takes. Uh, if you try to log into practice power, you'll see a nasty sign that says maintenance mode. It's just, we just have to freeze the site to do the update. So that should only last a couple hours, so just be aware of that. Um, we expect the full website uh, and the academy to be out by July 1st. We're working towards that deadline. Uh, you will see it as it unfolds, but we won't do the rebranding until probably after the 4th of July. With that being said, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be offering 10 lifetime memberships. So just be aware of that uh, if you want to take us up on that. One of the, one of the uh, new key enhancements of Practice Power Academy is going to be brain food. You know, one of the things I used to do in my daily emails and my daily videos was always put some kind of personal development or thought process or something down that, um, you know, was relevant to my morning ritual, to my, to my brain food daily, right, my mental diet. And uh, so we're going to start a whole uh, area inside of Practice Power well, you'll have all that information, all that links to it. So you'll always have a library of uh, cool things uh, if you uh, need to go use them, okay? So just want to give an update on that. Let's move on to the uh, next part of our webcast. So what I want to talk to you all about this week, a couple things, three things. Now, number one, uh, welcome to June 1st. So welcome to June means welcome to what? A brand new monthly game plan. Now again, whether you're using our Practice Power build, our, our game plan builder on PracticePower.net, you have your own tool you like to use. You're using our, our Excel file that's available on, on, the, on the website also. It's just it's really really important every month to put together that one pager, so that you have a roadmap for that for you know for the four week or 30 day process. You know what a lot of advisors do. And I want you to kind of think about this for a second. What a lot of advisors do is they, they put a lot of energy and effort into putting a business plan together and, and doing all that work, right? And then they never extrapolate it down into 30-day chunks. Okay, what am I going to focus on in the next 30 days? And that's why by usually, you know, March or April, uh, the, the business plan slash game plan for the year is out the door, and we're back into reactive mode. And you never want to be there if you can avoid it. So one of the things I, I do want you to do is take some time now, as I said a minute ago, if you're going to use practice power, I'd wait till tomorrow or maybe the weekend to do it in, you know, if you're going to use the site. But make sure you're very clear on the following things. So here's the list real quick. Number one, what are your top five goals or outcomes for the month? All right. So when I say top five, I don't mean like, well, I want to bring in more assets or more production or more clients. Let's let's get let's hone it down a little bit, right? So give me a range, you know, maybe you know, f again, examples: five hundred thousand to a million dollars of new money, one to three new clients, 
right? You start breaking it down into ranges so you have something to, to, to go with, right? And typically what we see, quite frankly, revenue, AUM, clients, right? I mean, those are usually the three that will post monthly game plans. So that's one segment. The second segment is what's the business development activities we're going to do for June? So talk to me about introduction and referral sourcing. Talk to me about what our, what, what our social media right, newsletter, what, what are our deliverables that for the month around that, right? Uh, what else are we going to do from, to get the word out to drive business, business development, right? So referrals, optimization, website, newsletters, things like that, client events, any hybrid events coming up that we're going to take advantage of, all those things, right? So you want to just really be very, very focused on that, right? And then obviously, what are you going to do for yourself this month from a personal development standpoint? So what are our personal development goals, exercise goals, education goals, uh, you know, personal development goals, things like that. So these are just some elements that, I, that you always want to make sure each and every month that you have on the board. And then obviously your monthly game plan, you want to review it every day. It becomes part of what you do to build your daily game plan. All right, so very important that way. All right, so let's now shift. This is something that I, I uh, in working with a couple clients last week when I got back from my trip, um, you know, what happens when you know, either you start the day really like crappy, right? Or you're having a decent day and then X happens, right? X being maybe one of your clients fires you or you had a bad review meeting. And all of a sudden, you know, you're in this, you know, you're, you're just not in the place where you can be effective. You know, you're being reactive, you're, you're like almost shut down. Now what most advisors do when they get in that mode is they distract themselves. And in our space, um, there's really no shortage of distractions. Uh, you know, you can basically go ahead and surf the internet, check the markets, right? Uh, you know, take that wholesaler meeting that you'll never do any business with that person, right? But you'll let them come in the office and spend some time, uh, things like that. What you have to realize is when you get into a pattern like that, the worst thing you can do is sit in your office and be in a highly negative, disempowered state. You run the very real risk of creating what we call an anchor or an association to it. So here's what that looks like. Let's just say, and, and maybe, you, maybe you've experienced this, you know, you get up in the morning and, and man, you know, like maybe it's a Monday, maybe it's a Friday, it doesn't matter, right? But you say to yourself, you know, I'm going to have a good day today. And you actually do your morning ritual. And you get excited, you get all pumped up, right? And you get in your vehicle, you get to your office, and man, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna control my day. I'm gonna make it happen. And as soon as you hit your office, it's like somebody just sucked all the energy out. They like all the enthusiasm, all the inspiration just gets sucked right out, right? Well, what happened there? What happened is that you have an anchor and association to your office, and it's not a good one. Now, how did that happen? Because while you're in the office over a period of weeks, months, even years, you've had some negative experiences, right? Some, we won't use the word trauma in a very you know, cautious way. And human beings create these, these subconscious anchors. And the only way to break those is to break the pattern. So step one is that when you're in the day and you're just not feeling it or you had something negative happen to you, step one. Get up from your desk, get out of your office, you know, take a 10 to 15 minute break, 30 minute break, go take a walk, use your body, right? I've got clients that just kind of walk around the office or they'll walk around the building or they'll walk outside, but the bottom line is they move around. The last thing you want to do is sit around and stew on things. Nobody does any good, right? So, and I don't care if you've got messages, you've got things to do, here's the reality of it. If you're in a negative state, you're not going to be effective. And you don't want to be not effective. So take a 15 to 30 minute break, walk around, change your physiology, restart the day, right? Come back fresh, right? If it's something that, and I've had this, by the way, with clients over the years where I get the 911 call, right? What's going on? You know, I, this just happened to me. You know, my client just fired me, whatever it is. And, and I say, well, look, you've got two choices. You can sit in your office and stew, not going to do any good, or let's get out of the office and ponder it. Let's be reflective, right? What, what do we miss? 
I'm always going to tell you get out of the office. I don't, and the reason why, I don't want to create any negative anchors or negative associations. Right? So please, all of you, give yourself permission that when things aren't going well for you, when you just know you're not, you know, you just know, you know when you're not, you're not bringing it. Don't sit there and grind through it, fight through it. You're going to be ineffective. What you want to do, change the environment, change it, get out, do some things, make it happen, right? So again, make, make major patterns, major associations. If some of you are wondering, Joe, I do have a negative anchor to my office, an association, right? I feel like I never feel empowered. A couple things. And I don't care if you're at a major firm or, you're, or you have your own space. Your office needs to be the most inspirational place it can possibly be. So what does that mean? Everybody's got different things, right? Uh, you can see my office, right? I like minimalist, right? I've got some paintings, uh, art. You know, I run a very, you know, I, I kind of like the that kind of modern vibe, if you will. So this makes me feel good. This is my happy place in the house, right? From my, from my perspective. Redecorate your office. If you have some, if you can't, if you can't physically change your office, can you reshuffle the furniture? Can you paint it? Can you bring, uh, you know, uh, different uh, different sounds like water features? plants, things like that, making it so that it feels different and it doesn't feel the same. You know, in my career when I've gone to see certain offices, it, they're very antiseptic. They're just, they're just barren of any personality. They've got the ugly contractor yellow paint, right, and, and you know, the, the commercial carpeting, and, and there's just there's nothing there. Remember, you're going to spend in your business career and in your life, chances are, you're going to spend more time in your office potentially consciously awake than you do in your own home because sleeping doesn't count, right? You're unconscious there. So make sure that your, your office, and by the way, also in a home office, that they both are conducive to giving you lots of energy. Okay, so I just want to make, make that statement. Last thing for me, and then we're going to flip to what some of you want to talk about. Uh, summer strategy. So here we are. Memorial Day is coming and gone. Welcome to, you know, not the official summer yet, but for most of us it's summer. Um, make decisions on what you're going to do, right? So if your brain says the kids are home from school and I need to be home, at, you know, by two or three o'clock in the afternoon or whatever it means to you, and you can only give your business six hours a day, give them, give it six hours, get out. You know, the last thing you want to do in the summer of this business is shopkeep. Well, I got nowhere to really be. You know, I'll just hang around, just see what happens. That, remember I just talked about negative anchor, negative association? Think about this. You sit in your office and you give yourself permission to hang out. You condition yourself to hang out. And then you think like come Labor Day you're going to hit a switch and we're just going to get super productive like as soon as the holiday's over. It doesn't work that way. So here's the deal. And I have this deal with all my clients. Either we're productive and we're killing it in the office or I don't want you in the office. Go, I don't care what you do, hang out at home, go see a movie, go hang out with the fam, whatever, go play golf, whatever you need to do, do not hang out in your office. It creates all kind of long-term issues with the business, okay? So do that. If you're going to take a look, a lot of my clients take a lot of downtime. Uh, a lot of my clients take Fridays off. You know, they go play, uh, a couple weeks vacation here and there. Schedule it. Just understand the days of, you know, what days between now and Labor Day that you're going to be engaged in your business and the days you're going to go play. Make those distinctions very clear. Don't leave it ambiguous where you can run into some challenges. Okay? So just be very, very clear on that. And, and a couple other things real quick on summer. I will admit in some cases there's a different flow and pace to things. Okay? But this is not Italy. Where they shut the where they shut down for the summer. Okay, this is not Europe where they shut down. People commerce still happens, business still gets transacted. Yeah, maybe a little bit different pace, but don't get the psychology and the belief that well nobody wants to do business in the summer, nobody wants to come in during the summer, nobody wants to do reviews in the summer. Certain percentage that's true, but not your entire business. Okay, and I find quite frankly, um, uh, most advisors have this, psych this, this psychology that you can't do business in the summer. And I find that's the best time to be out there marketing, 
that's the best time to be out there networking and talking to people. Even if you're just setting the, even if you're just setting it up for after, for for after Labor Day, you're kind of you know kind of setting it all up. It's still fine. It's still productive versus hanging out, right? So just be very clear on that. So just make sure you're very clear on what your rules are, what you want to accomplish over the next uh, period of time. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and we have some member questions. Uh, the first one is from Renee, and I'm going to look up. Uh, you've seen me looking on the side just because I have a control panel here. Uh, Renee's not here, so I'm going to ask the question anyway. So Renee asked, um, I was hoping we could spend some more time uh, talking about financial planning, resources, and, and fees, which is a great question, by the way. Uh, so let me give you all some of my distinctions, beliefs, first off, uh, and so it has some context of things. Uh, first off, I see our industry definitely going more planning-centric than just AUM centric. So I don't think financial planning is optional anymore. And I believe it also needs to be a paid process. So, you know, it's so giving away plans and so here's the here's the way it looks for a lot for a lot of people in this industry. I'm gonna do this plan for you and I'm not gonna charge you because you're gonna to want to bring me your business. And, and prospects today are very sophisticated. They're not naive. They have a lot. Of, they have access to a lot more information than even 10 years ago. There's no. There's very little value in that. Why? Because the client didn't. The prospect didn't pay for it. They're not engaged. It's a quid pro quo. I'm going to do this. You're going to do that. It's just not professional. Uh, I see more and more clients. And by the way, these are also clients at major firms at wirehouses that are now. The, the way the client engagement starts is with a plan, a paid planning project, and whether that's a five, you know, anywhere from five hundred to five thousand uh, dollar planning project, th you get hired. So think about the psychology around this first. A prospect engages you in a planning project. It doesn't matter where their assets are; they're going to hire you as their planner. Psychologically, they've hired you. Our experiences are now. Granted, it's only about I only about a year of experience with this at this level, but I can sit here and say on this on this webcast today that if you have ten prospects that pay you for a plan, and quite frankly, it doesn't matter what you what you charge, that nine out of ten of them are going to hire you long term, uh, bring the assets to you because in their mind they've hired you. Okay, so for Renee, even though he's not here. You know, I think number one is you want to charge for planning, and I don't think it matters what you charge, but they have to sign an agreement, right? Makes it real, and they have to cut a check, makes them committed. It's a whole different psychology than just doing stuff for free. And as far as resources go, I mean, there's plenty of resources. Uh, most of my clients uh, use Money Guide. I mean, the model that I see is Money Guide Pro and eMoney. As kind of left, right, foot, one, two, right, if you will, from that perspective. I mean, there are plenty of other planning softwares, that software packages out there. I think you've got to find the one that resonates with you. Uh, I'm just telling you from my experience what I see out there, uh, either Money Guy Pro and uh, eMoney. So let's pivot to Bill. Uh, I am frustrated with my assistant. Okay, how how can I make them more productive and valuable to me? So uh, you know, a couple things. Number one is. If you're frustrated with, it, with with your assistant, it normally means that there's a leadership management issue, and unfortunately, Bill, for you, the, you know, the buck's going to stop at your desk. Um, most advisors do not know how to really manage, lead, coach, mentor their assistants. They expect this do what I say, plug and play uh, savant, right? You can just read my mind because you're my assistant, right? It doesn't work that way. So a couple things. Number one. You must do a daily five to ten minute huddle in the morning, and what we do with the huddle is what is going to happen in the next 24 hours, what has transpired in the last 24 hours, business days, right? Uh, so real tactical, what are we working on, what did we work on, right, what's going on? Once a week, you want to have a team meeting where you go over your monthly game plan, what has to get accomplished, right, big picture stuff. And then ideally, once a month, you have a little bit more of an in-depth meeting, right, where you kind of lay things out. Uh, you always want to be providing your team members feedback. So course correct regularly, 
right? Don't wait. You know, I, I find this this has been you know true for a quarter century for me. I'll, I'll have a client come in and they'll just be so frustrated with their assistant, and I say, well, well, how often do you speak to them, or when did the last time you spoke to them about this, right? Or what have you done to uh, to, to cure this, right? And, and and they'll say nothing, and I'll say, well, how long has this been going on? Months, quarters, years in some cases, right? And I sit there and say to myself, what kind of business person would would just deal with it that way, right? Suffer in silence, and and I think this is where you know, we all have to understand that the one of the identities that we need to have is manager leader. You know, and in essence, manager leader coach. Okay, it's not natural. You know, when I built my team and my and, and my team's virtual, right? I wasn't born a leader. I wasn't born even a great manager. I'm a, I'm great at what I do. At least I think I'm great at what I do here, right? At least people tell me that. The other skill sets are you have to go get, right? They're, you have to go learn them. So I would say for Bill, number one is objectively, how much of this is them? How much of this is because you're not providing guidance, leadership, accountability, coaching, training, mentoring, communication, right? Uh, all those things. I think that's the first thing you need to do. And, and really make sure you sit down with them on, on an absolute regular basis. Okay, so just some things there. All right, and then we'll get to Terry's question, and if there's no other questions, uh, nobody's put anything on the board, uh, we'll wrap up and, and we'll see you all next week. So with Terry, um, with all the talk of robo, ro robo advisors and, and everything else, you know, how can I make sure that I'm not seen as commodity in my clients? Great question. So here's a little list. Number one, I really think a collaborative financial planning, to go to Renee's question, I think a collaborative financial planning process gives you greater depth with your client relationships. I think you know you you, you get you, you, they definitely become stickier. All right. Also, let's also understand what robo really is. Right. It's gonna it's it's going to appeal to a certain population of our industry, but let's remember who it's mostly going to going to you know appeal to. It's going to appeal to a lot of the non collaboratives. All right, the ones that want, in essence, the ones that want to do it themselves. They don't want to pay a lot of fees. Um, they don't want to deal with human beings, right? You know, they're never really our market anyway, from that perspective. Um, you know, I think a lot of times, you know, I think there's a lot this this fear. I think what what happens if you can if you can marry uh, automation with relationship, now you have a killer app. Now you've got something that's scalable that you can do some really, really cool things with. And I know there's a lot of talk around, you know, Betterment and Wealthfront, and everybody's bringing their, you know, Wells Fargo's building theirs, and Morgan Stanley's building theirs, and uh, I think LPL uh, just partnered with, I think it was BlackRock or something like that to put theirs together. And you're seeing all these kind of announced partnerships and integrations and things like that. The, the, the biggest one out there that nobody talks about is Vanguard, and Vanguard will give you a, a CFP for 50 bips. They're the killer app out there. If you want to look at a model that, that you need to be aware of, the Vanguard model is really the one that I think is going to be the dominant one. If they just rolled their 401k asset fees over to this model, they quadruple their revenue streams. I mean, it's, it's, it's shocking what they can do, right? But getting back to Terry real quick, you got to remember, what business are you in? And that's a, by the way, that's a question most entrepreneurs and most people in this industry don't ask themselves enough. What business am I truly in? Because if you say you're in a financial planning business, okay, that's a deliverable. If you say I'm in the money business or I'm in the investment business, that's an outcome, right? Um, that could be commoditized. You have to be in the relationship, problem solving, nurturing, 911411 business with people, your clients. Because there'll never be a machine, a software program, artificial intelligence that will ever take the place of human interaction. Think about this. And by the way, um, I think it was last August, Fortune Magazine, if you ever, uh, I think it's last August, it could have been July, it could have been September, I remember in the summer I read it. There was a real, there was a, the cover story was about how artif the threat of artificial intelligence 
in business, in the marketplace, in society. And they brought uh, all of these brilliant thinkers from MIT and Harvard and really allowed the futurists together. And, you know, the theme was that, you know, they said, you know, great example, uh, the uh, Da Vinci robot. It does very intricate surgery. Right? It's a robot. It's a machine, right? It does, it does a better job than any, than any human surgeon. But it will never re make, but it will never replace the surgeon talking to the patient about how the surgery went or what's going to happen. Remember, we as human beings, in our DNA, we're still tribal. We still look for the tribes, the groups. We want to be a part of something, right? We still have that human act, that human relationship aspect to it. So think of robo as a delivery mechanism, right? for an outcome. It does not take the place of relationships. So Terry, I think in your case, a couple questions. How often are you doing touch-based calls with your clients? What kind of client educational events and fun events are you doing, right? Um, you know, what are you doing to really nurture and create those relationships? Do your clients really understand and care, and do they really know that you care about them? And do you communicate that care, right? You know, all those things that take us from being non-commodity to value, right? Even in my space. When somebody says to me, hey, Joe, I'm interested about your coaching service, I immediately correct them and say, look, I don't have a service. You want a service? Practice power. I mean, that's probably as close as I'm going to get. What I offer are relationships, meaningful relationships and now partnerships. So I, I correct people because I don't want anybody to pigeonhole me Make sure you all do the same thing, and Terry, especially you, don't allow people to articulate your core story, your statement of preeminence, your identity. If you allow them to do that and you don't correct them respectfully, then you just basically validated it, okay? So I just want to make that statement to everybody. Um, that's it. Three questions, some topics there. In front of these, anything else on the board I need to discuss today? Um, I'm showing a clear board here on questions. So... With that being said, so remember, we do these uh, every coaching week. I'm here on Wednesdays. Throw a question in there. I'll invite you on the call. We'll have we'll have, gonna have some dialogue, and uh, and remember, you know, look forward to some communication on uh, Practice Power Academy as we get ready for our July 1st launch date. With that being said, thank you all for taking time out. Look, I know it's a very very short week with the holiday on Monday. I appreciate you all being here. Hopefully, I've added some value to you. Uh, we did record this, and a replay will be made available to you. Uh, you'll get that with the invitation for next Wednesday's call. And with that, enjoy the rest of your week. Have a great weekend. I'll see you in seven days.